Welcome to Old School Sports and a new series here, Rebuilding, Reconstructing, Saving the New York Yankees. Now you may wonder, what is there to rebuild? The Yankees are coming off a 92-70 and 70 season. They made it to the playoffs. But if you are a New York Yankees fan, the goal, we are spoiled, I admit it, but the goal of every season is to win the World Series. And by that measure, the Yankees, over the last 21 years, are as unsuccessful as they ever have been in their history. They've won one title in the last 21 seasons, 2001 to 2021. There is exactly one other period in the history of the New York Yankees that they have been that unsuccessful. And that was from their origination as the New York Highlanders in 1903 to their first World Series championship in 1923. Ever since then, they have never experienced a period as unsuccessful in terms of winning it all as the last 21 years. Not the 60s when the final dynasty began falling apart and they lost Barra and Whitey and Mantle eventually and were bought by CBS and were a miserable team into the early 70s. Not as bad as that. And certainly not even as bad as the 80s when they didn't win a title in the entire decade for the first time since the 1910s. But they still had a win in 77 and 78. And then the next dynasty started in 96, in 98, in 99, and 2000. So we are taking over as general manager to fix what has become an embarrassment over the last 20 years, the Yankees' payroll has been somewhere in the neighborhood of about $3.8 billion. Give or take a few hundred. These numbers aren't perfect. But the closest teams to them over that time period are Boston and the Los Angeles Dodgers who both have payrolls of somewhere in the neighborhood of about $3 billion over that same time period. So the Yankees have literally been spending over $40 million a year more than their closest competitors. And in many cases, they've been spending literally over $100 million a season more than many teams in Major League Baseball. And they have won World Series championship to show for it. Brian Cashman may be a good GM in terms of making money for the Steinbrenners, but fans want to win and win it all. So, Brian, you're out. Old school sports has taken over, and we are going to rebuild this team. And we're certainly going to win one more, more than one title in the next 20 years. I'll tell you that for sure. And when we look at this team, there's a lot of work to do. When I say rebuild the Yankees, I'm going to be making some changes. I'm old school. These guys who strike out 40% of their at-bats, you're gone. You can't hit the ball. You only hit home runs. You don't do anything else. You can't play defense. You're gone. We are going to clean this team up. But it's going to be a big project. But being the Yankees, 
that doesn't mean we get to totally tear it down and rebuild. We're going to try winning on the fly. You can see we've still got the second biggest budget in, pay, in, in, in baseball. We've still got a huge market with great fan loyalty and off-the-charts fan interest. This is a lot easier than a lot of other things you could try to do in this game. But this one's personal. Because I'm not going to sit around and watch Brian Cashman win maybe one title in the next 20 years with the Yankees. Come on. Clean this up. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of work to do. Let's look at this roster. There's going to be a lot of changes made. You can see we're playing in challenge mode. Yeah, before I get into the roster, we'll talk about challenge mode. That obviously hopefully makes things a little more difficult for us uh, and keeps us honest in terms of our play. We're not really going to change too many settings at all other than going into challenge mode. Um, just so you know, the only settings that we're going to change, um, players in face gen, we are going to show player personality ratings on the profile page. Um, if things like good work ethic, bad work ethic, good in the clubhouse, bad in the clubhouse, good leader, bad leader, etc., impacts our performance, I want to know that stuff. So I do click that one back on. Uh, other than that, um, you can see here on challenge mode, normally trading difficulty runs from easy to hard. Challenge mode defaults to normal to hard, um, and we're already one notch up. So that's kind of level six out of the ten levels between easy and hard. We're going to bump it up to another two notches to be eight out of ten towards hard. Um, Try to make things a little more difficult for us. Um, we're always going to have the advantage of having a huge payroll as um, the New York Yankees, but this will hopefully, you know, make things challenging. So you know, we don't end up just winning the World Series every year, and we have to fight for it a little bit. Other than that, um, the only other setting I am going to change is. I am going to not enable automatic evolution of the league for time for the time being. Um, we are in the winter right now. Uh, I was hoping to wait for OOTP 23 to begin this, but given that uh, the Major League Players Association and the owners are still at an impasse, uh, really don't know when that's going to happen, when the when the 2022 season is going to begin. Um, and obviously it probably will take a little while um, for OOTP 23 to come out um, because there's still a lot of free agency that needs to be settled. So we're just going to start this now. So we are playing, um, we are at the end of the 2021 season. But we have uh, updated the Yankees roster through what it would theoretically look like uh, as of mid-February of 2022 when we are starting this series. Um, so yeah, we're also going to just change the names of the Silver Slugger and the Gold Glove Awards. Um, that's just a little pet peeve of mine. So I'm going to change those while I'm on this screen. But other than that, it is um, all of the settings that would come with, with challenge mode. So um, not changing anything else except the few things I've noticed. And then also bumping up the trade difficulty a couple of um, extra notches to just keep things uh, keep things a little, little more difficult and make it a little more challenging for me. Because we are going to be making a lot of trades. As I mentioned, I am not pleased with the front office and what the Yankees have done in terms of management over the last decade plus. We felt, you know, four or five, six years ago that the baby bombers were on the way up and we had kind of gotten past the team of the early 2010s that, that won, the, won championship in 2009 but then had bloated contracts of aging players for, for several seasons. We're pretty much a perennial playoff team, but it was trending in the wrong direction. And then we thought the baby bombers were coming, and it's been a total disaster. Greg Bird, 
injuries have just completely derailed his career. Luis Severino, similar story, not as bad. He's still here with the Yankees. We've still got hope. Glaber Torres didn't hit much last year. Can't play shortstop defensively. We're going to probably try to replace, we're definitely going to be replacing him at shortstop this season. Uh, the question is, um, do we get rid of him off the team entirely, or do we try to convert him to a second baseman or a third baseman? I think that's probably the plan. Hopefully he can bounce back and hit for, for more power than he has recently and get his career back on track. He's still young. Miguel Andahar had great potential when he first came up. What's happened to him? Aaron Judge. All rise for the judge. He is obviously the baby boomer, the, the baby bomber that has been most successful. Um, We've got to make a decision on his final arbitration eligible season coming up in the next couple of weeks, and then we'll need to decide whether to sign him to a long-term contract. And then the last of the key baby bombers. The most polarizing, perhaps, Gary Sanchez, the catcher. Great power. But as I mentioned already, if you're going to play on these Yankees, these championship Yankees that we're building. You can't strike out all the time. You can't be a 140 hitter. You got to be able to play some defense. So there's going to be some changes coming. Looking at this roster. First and foremost... We'll go through the batters. And as you may guess, Sanchez will definitely be gone. Can't hit the ball. Doesn't avoid strikeouts. Not that good defensively. His personality traits, at least for the purpose of this game, are not all that great. And then you look at these batting averages. 204, 147, 232, 186. I know the new analytics is all about exit velocities. In launch angles. In the new metrics. And I'm not stuck in the 1950s. I agree that there's probably a better way of doing things than the old school book way of baseball from a century ago. But if you're going to play on my team, you're going to have to hit a lot higher than 200. So we're going to trade Sanchez away without a doubt while we can still get some value for him. Somebody will be tempted by his bat and his power, which is wonderful. But it's not going to be this Yankees team. Other moves, I mentioned Judge coming off a nice bounce back year. The issue with Aaron is he's fragile, but he's a very good defensive right fielder. He does make contact. He hits for great power. Strikes out more than I like, but still a di very different offensive profile than somebody like Gary Sanchez. So Judge, we will probably keep around and try to extend. We're going to build this thing around him. Joey Gallo. Sorry, buddy. You're not coming back. He's going to be arbitration eligible, but it's not going to be with the New York Yankees. You can see very versatile defensively. A left-handed bat, which we actually do need. I give Cashman credit for bringing him on in the middle of the season last year and trying to fix a glaring mistake of his that the Yankees had no left-hand bats. Because even though the new Yankee Stadium 
does not play exactly like the old Yankee Stadium, you still want to have some left-handed bats there. But Gallo, poor contact, poor gap power, ridiculously poor at avoiding strikeouts. I mean, some of the batting stats he's put up in recent years make Sanchez look like Rod Carew. 199, 160, 223, 181, 206, 209, 040, 204. Come on. So Gallo has played his last game for the Yankees. Aaron Hicks. Nothing really against him. He's been hurt quite often, pretty much ever since he signed his large extension. He's a decent outfielder. A decent bat. But he's the center fielder for the Brian Cashman constructed Yankees. And you can see, not all that great at playing the position. Good range, decent air, decent arm. But not strong enough unless he had a huge bat. But he's a mediocre defensive center fielder with an average bat who's already 32 years old. And you can see is signed for another five seasons. So we're going to be looking to find some team willing to take that contract off of us as we try to clean things up. In with some of these trades, especially at the relatively difficult trade setting, we may be having to give up prospects. We may be having to keep part of these salaries. But our goal is to quickly clean up this roster and shape it in a way that we like. The big decision, speaking of large bloated contracts, is going to be what we do with Giancarlo Stanton. Like Aaron Judge, he's fragile, but he's older than Aaron Judge. Not as good of a contact hitter. And the contract. That contract, the next several seasons in the neighborhood of $30 million a year. It does get more manageable towards the end of it, but tough bat to potentially let go of. We'll have to see the way the rest of the offseason goes, what we're able to get for some of the other players that we're definitely going to be trading. But it's quite possible that Stanton's played his last game as a Yankee, too. And if we could get something for Ruffnet Odor, another guy who doesn't make very good contact and strikes out way too much, we'll let him go also if we can. The positive thing with him is we only have one year left at $12 million, and then we will certainly be declining the 2023 option for 13 and a half million so uh if we have to keep him on the roster for this coming year because it's too costly for us to dump him uh we'll do that and then we'll have to make decisions on Rizzo kind of have LeMahieu for the foreseeable future he does make better contact than most of the people on our team and he's versatile can play first, second, and third. So the thought is not a great contract for a player who's going to be 34 next season. And we've got it $15 million per for another five years. But particularly if we're able to trade for or sign a shortstop to replace Torres, and we can move Glaber to second or third, um, you know, maybe LeMahieu slides to first. We'll have to figure out what we want to do with Luke Voigt. Arbitration eligible. Probably bring him back. But at least LeMahieu's got a little defensive versatility for us, and at least he makes contact. Andujar, you know, Urshela, fine with them at third. Maybe some left field for Andujar. Could see some DH from them. 
We'll let Aaron Boone decide, assuming we retain him as manager. But there's going to be some big changes made here in the lineup. Pitching, a little bit different of a situation. The big bloated contract at this point is Chapman. You can see the stuff, fantastic as always, but movement and control at this point in his career, not great. He'll be 34 years old by the start of next season, and he's under his last year with us at $16 million per year. So we've got a decision to make with him, but again, at least only one year left, so we're not going to pay a ton to trade him away. We'll let him pitch for us for one more season if need be. It's always nice to have a nice left-handed arm out of the pen. Other than Chapman, there's not horrible contracts. I mean, Garrett Cole was obviously disappointing in the playoffs last season. But he's still got four fantastic pitches. Great stuff, acceptable movement, good control. Eventually, this contract is going to be brutal. $36 million a year for another seven seasons. It's going to be 38 by the seventh of those years. Eventually, this contract is going to be probably something we, we may look to get out of, and it's probably going to be pretty costly for us. In terms of the players, we'll have to get up to get out of it or the amount of it that we'll have to keep for very limited returns, but certainly not going to get rid of him right now. And some of these players may or may not be on the team next year. Jordan Montgomery looks like somebody nice for us to be building around. Had a really good season in 2021 for the Yankees. Manageable contract, arbitration eligible still. We'd like to sign him to perhaps a longer deal. I mentioned Severino hasn't pitched much for the last four years or the last three years due to COVID and injuries. Would like to see that third pitch of his be a little better, but plus stuff, plus movement, plus control. Question is how expensive can we, can we deal with him? Got him for this coming season at 11 million and then an option for 15 million. Um, if he's healthy and he performs well this coming year, you probably extend the option. If it if he doesn't, if he's hurt again, then we, we probably let him go or try to sign him for less, but at least he's still got potential. And then the bullpen, a lot of decent options, nothing particularly exciting. Green, decent pitcher, Holmes came to the Yankees, did well. So we've got some decisions to make. And then there's also players. These, This is the, the roster that I've just shown you as of right now, but there's uh, obviously players on the injured list. Zach Britton, $14 million next year. Out. He's a guy that will want, probably want to uh, want to get rid of. Might not be able to get out from under that contract, but it would certainly be good if we could. We'll see how it goes. So we've got a lot of work to do. In our next episode, we're going to come back and talk you through our choices for the off season. We've obviously done. We've obviously kind of explained a lot of what we would like to do. There's going to be a lot of interesting upcoming free agents. Um, it's kind of interesting, although um, we're back in November of 2021, just after the end of the, the World Series and the 2021 season. They say that the rosters are where they are as of early February when, when I'm starting this, this sim. But if we look at um, what OOTP has actually done in terms of the upcoming free agents, you can see that you know Scherzer with the Mets is is not reflected. You know, if we look at the batters, 
Seeger with the Texas Rangers is not reflected. And there's lots of other deals that have actually happened in real life that for whatever reason are, are not reflected um, in the game. It's probably what they do to get you to buy OOTP 23, which I was going to do anyways, and I will do anyways. So uh, it would be interesting if this was a little more updated, but it is what it is. So this isn't what the real Yankees are going to, to look like in 2022, but we also know that the real Yankees aren't going to uh, be firing Brian Cashman. But we have an old school sports is the new general manager of the New York Yankees. And big old Hal doesn't have unreasonable goals for us. Reach the playoffs, hey, that's our goal too. I've already talked about it in team batting average. Yeah, we want that to be better. And then acquire a locally popular player. Yeah, we're going to be getting rid of a lot of guys. So we can make a lot of trades to bring in somebody popular. And we're also hoping to open up some money to perhaps sign some free agents in this offseason. Because looking at this team, would love to get another front-end top-line starter. And would love to bring in a shortstop who is better defensively than Glaber is. Who can also hit a little bit. And then we're going to be bringing in a new catcher who doesn't strike out 35, 40% of the time. And we'll probably ultimately need to find a center fielder also. So we've got some work to do, but it's not going to all be through free agency because there's a lot of people that we want to trade away to kind of clean up this roster and then and only then will the evil empire rise again and start winning multiple championships and frustrating the fans in Boston and the Mets fans in Tampa Bay we're not going to be losing to you anymore in Toronto and Baltimore and the rest of the AL. And yeah, even you, the Dodgers, you can take your number one budget and your number one payroll. And the New York Yankees are going to show you the meaning of dominance. We will be back with our next episode in which we'll review the off-season changes that we made preparing for the 2022 season. We're probably also going to be making some changes to our personnel. Nothing major, but just want to go through and make sure that we're pleased with all of our minor league managers, pitching and hitting coaches. Because as I mentioned, the goal is to play this sim for the next 20 seasons and win more than the pathetic one World Series championship that Cashman and the Yankees have won over the last 20 years. I'll go on record now saying our, our over-under is going to be three and a half titles. Less than three and a half championships over the next 20 years is a disappointment. More than three and a half will be success. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy this new series in the coming weeks and months. If you're enjoying things, would love it if you subscribe and like these videos. And if you've got comments and thoughts, would love to hear them down below. Have a great day.